You guys know what we're making? No, that's not wide enough. This is one of the, the greatest days in the history of our studio. We're making a guillotine, a functioning guillotine. That is exactly how I messed that up. Jolly Boss, if you're watching this, thanks. Oh my god, Brett, you're dead! I let everyone down. So sometimes on Fridays, a couple of us like to go down to our local market, peruse through their awesome craft beer selection from all over the world. It's a classy and tasty way to wind down after a long week. But there's a problem with doing this on the regular. Is that it gets expensive. <laughs> what if we came up with a contraption that allowed us to make a little bit of money each month to pay for these fine beers? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say beer doesn't grow on trees. That's how it goes, right? Yeah. But does it grow on guillotines? Nico, guess what? what? We're starting a fourth channel. Oh. This is this a real thing that you're starting? Or is this uh, like, hey, this is like a lead into a funny segment that we're about to film? Well, both. Um, we're starting a guillotine channel. That's cool. Like, who wronged you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make a guillotine channel where we chops things with a guillotine. Th there's no fluff in this channel, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's just 100% condensed guillotine <laughs> content. Two things about guillotines. Guillotine, does it really matter how I say it? Potato, potato, nistat, nistat, whatever. <laughs> Number one, guillotines are really, really tall. Number two, they're super gruesome. Number three, it has to fit in the studio, so... Or does it? What do you mean, or does yeah, it? It's a death machine! I'm we'll not gonna leave it outside! Up. The bed itself, six feet. This part, 12 feet. No. And then it's on a stand. Giant, sharpened steel blade. You go through the clamper, and then this part has to have a lock. And, and that's where we're gonna start, so... I need, a, I need like, a couple key... 3D renderings of this. Do you think you can get me like four designs, five designs? Yeah. Finally! Oh, the guillotine's here! The guillotine's here! <laughs> a guillotine shows up and, God, it attracts everyone out here. Everyone. This is how tall it's gonna be. Oh. Yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. What the heck? Yeah. It's so yeah, but, intimidating. But, but, just wait, just wait until it's put together. <laughs> you never saw it from that thing. You were led up into it. Oh, hey, hey, yeah, you don't want that. Right table, it. you don't want the real one. Yes! Yeah, uh. it looks like this. In the late 70s is when the last uh, guillotine for death sentences were used. You know, in the 1870s, yeah. No, 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 1970s. Here's what I read online about guillotines being used to commit legal executions. Number one, the last public execution took place in France in 1939. And then the last time they used it for an execution was, I think, in 1977. Yeah. Where? In France. No, I, I swear it's in That's America. Awesome. In America? Yeah. We're using that. Yeah, we like no. hanging no. people yeah. here. Okay. Hanging oh, an old hanging. Sparky. Yeah, we don't use that here. We're humane. The guillotine is way better than the electric chair, though. Uh, this so far seems like people are pretty excited about it. We're gonna start with the wooden structure. Uh, I'm not gonna get to the blade in this episode because that is gonna be a journey unto itself. It's gonna have to be machined and it needs to be obviously tested, but here we're just gonna focus on building the guillotine itself. Also, before I build the blade, I need to know exactly how wide the slide is. First things first, we're gonna take this wood right here, we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna put it together in a different way to make a guillotine. Guillotine. This drill. Why do you need that drill? I'll use this one. And this one. And this one. Yeah. Well, if I mess this up, I'll probably never get to make one of these again. Oh, this is just uh, three quarter inch plywood. Nothing fancy. Hey, I told you I wasn't a pro. I'm just a hobbyist who likes making interesting things. I think six feet long. Listen, whoever gets on this thing needs to be comfortable. It's the last thing they're gonna lay on. Oh, shit. Is this mine? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> There's definitely no room for Jack on that door. I really wanted this 4x4. Four four. Look at it, but you can't leave this room. Okay. 
So it says it right there how tall it's supposed to be. Two and a half feet. Two and a half feet is too tall. Two and a half feet is the American way. <laughs> I think it's at about the right height. In Gabe's design, this goes. I mean, your he heads aren't that big. It's not for a head, Carmichael. We're not gonna cut someone's head off. Look, your head's fitting through that slot perfectly. I think I made the bench too narrow. I, re I already messed up. Should have laid on it before you cut it. Stop talking in a really bad John Wayne accent. <laughs> no, that's not wide enough. Um, you come and tell me that that's wide enough for a guillotine, and, and I bet you everybody in this studio will say that that's too narrow. Fit head through that. <laughs> so your total, you'd have two feet. That means that the blade, that's too big. Yeah. The blade would have to be two feet across. That's so big. <laughs> that's so much steel, which is going to be the biggest <laughs> piece of steel this country's ever seen. American <laughs> Listen here, Sonny. That's the American way. You got some American on your back. Stop. <laughs> All right. Yo. Yo. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, I don't know how wide this guillotine blade should be. Currently, my blade's only going to be 11 inches, which I think. Oh, is we should make it way bigger than that. Cause, yeah. Because we want we want to chop novelty items. Right. 18 inches. That's all purpose. Oh my god, sorry I made fun of your John Wayne. Thanks. Jake. <laughs> Jake. Why do they call it a 2x4? Because it's cut from a 2x4 piece of wood. It's actually not 2x4. Really? This isn't 2x4 inches? No, it's an inch and a half by three and a half. See? Why is it not a true 2x4? Because it's machined down. Isn't that funny? I, I wonder all my measurements always wrong. I Son, I told you this, son. We're not cutting someone's head off. When did you start working with wood? You know, I don't know exactly. My dad was a carpenter. He would just always be working on something. Since I was born, he just was working on things. And so I just started learning stuff from him. He'd make us help him. And he like built a deck. I mean, he built two of the houses that we lived in. Like he knew how to build anything. So I would just stand there and like help him and watch what he was doing. I don't know when I started that, as soon as I could stand. And so then I just picked things up and then I started making things on my own. So I, that started when I was like seven, eight. Last year for Christmas, I built Rocky a dog house. Merry Christmas, buddy. <laughs> Made me feel like I was about to get my nose sawed off. Oh, hi Sam. Hi. What are you up to today? I'm up to uh, being a zombie today because I got up at 4.50 a.m. with my boy and he uh, usually goes back to sleep around like seven, eight if that happens, giving me an additional hour or two to sleep, but not today. So yeah, I slept five hours last night and for some reason I'm just like, I'm, a, I'm the walking dead. I'm uh, walking around pretending like I'm doing things. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> I can't, I can't think, I can't focus on something for more than like 10 minutes at a time right now. You know, you've, have you ever been that tired? Yeah. Where you just look at a computer screen and you're like, I can't, I can't think of a single thing. Mm-hmm. Listen, this is Corridor Digital. Everything almost always works. I really don't want to use a different drill for this. Ow. I got you, I got you. Hold on, that, that. Got you? There you go. Ready? Yep. You're good, you're good. Oh, it's great. It's I, 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 okay. I know why he's doing that. It's because I'm using the wrong drip. It's always the tools, man. It's day two of the guillotine build. Some things never change. I don't know if you can hear that, but we've got a dreamer up there. And that's a perfect segue for me to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. 
a square, that's a triangle. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that makes it possible for any dreamer to create a website and to market themselves and to create a business online. Now, whether you're just a musician hacking away at keys or a wannabe carpenter trying to make a guillotine in your loading dock, Squarespace has a platform for you. You can use their beautiful award-winning designer templates to get started, it's real easy. Squarespace also has new marketing tools this year, so if you guys wanna launch your new elbow, launch a product, just let people know what you're doing. They can help you out with that and stand out in any inbox. Of course, if you're having trouble understanding your beautiful award-winning template you can call their 24-7 award-winning customer service they'll help you get started you think you'll be able to get this done today uh, no I'm not gonna finish this today probably because I didn't use Squarespace as unique domain experience instead I tried to go out and purchase my own URL from a separate hosting site rather than just doing it all in one through Squarespace which you can do it took me way more time cost me more money and now I'm not gonna get this done on time Anyway guys, it's never been easier to start an online store. 2019 should be the year to do it. Go to squarespace.com to get started. And when you're ready to launch your site, go to squarespace.com slash corridor crew and get 10% as always off your first purchase. Whoa. <laughs> Well, it's important to make pilot holes because if you don't, your wood cracks. How do you make a pilot hole? What is a pilot hole? Well, a pilot hole, see, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a hole that pilots in the screw. You drill the pilot hole before you put the screw in. So that way, when your screw goes into the wood that you're screwing into, it doesn't crack the wood. You see, because a lot of times these screws are so thick that they'll crack the wood if you don't use a pilot hole. So it's a hole that you drill into the wood? Yes, a before hole you put the screw in. That's exactly right, Carmichael. Come on, man. I hate that somebody jammed this in here and now it's stuck in here forever. Man, he's finding that sound up there. He's finding it somewhere. I don't think you would call that jazz. That was pretty smooth. I, I'm feeling good about this one. There, I hit it. I actually did it. Did you see how it slid? Because that's because I found the pilot hole. Why do you use washers? Okay, you, you use washers because it reinforces and strengthens what you're doing. It creates more structural integrity to use a washer because then it ensures that your heads don't sink below a certain point. You call that, boy. You know, you look like a carpenter, but you don't, sure don't. Oh, oh, oh. Sure don't act like one. <laughs> I'm just trying to get these to sink. There we go. What's up? It's just crooked. No, I need to redo the bolts. I want to do that, but when we get to the actual blade, I cannot be that imprecise. What happens if you're imprecise with the blade? If I'm, in, if I'm imprecise with the blade, basically the blade doesn't have a straight path, meaning that it's interrupted by friction with the sides of the mass. You don't get a clean cut, basically. You could blink before you die. I like how you're setting this whole thing up as like a, a, death, a death machine. I mean, that's what it is! I guess you're right, it is. That's not what we're gonna use it for. This. Yeah, so that's the idea. Flip it upside down. I mean, that, that came out right. Look at that spacing. Done. Not on that side. That's because you, you messed that side yes, up. It is because I messed that side up. Your Christian Bale just came out. <laughs> that is exactly how I messed that up. Yeah, I gotta I gotta take these out because I need to be able to screw all the way through into to just take these out, flip this leg. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. You talk me into it, kid. Your germ deficiency is coming through. Did you flip the wood? did, and because I didn't use a pilot hole, 
I made a small crack in the wood. Because I thought the 4x4s could handle it. Jake, I, was, I was wrong. Jake, you need to practice one thing in your life. What's that? Take your own advice. Well, it's important to make pilot holes because if you don't, your wood cracks. I finally have base frame semi-constructed. Now, if I've done my work correctly, this should fit right in these grooves right here. Let's find out. Let's find out. Son, you made a wood cop. Son? You can put a, your kid's mattress on that. Uh, look at that, son. These are those open-ended coffins. The sturdy? I pass away on this. You pass away on that. I pass away on this. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's uh, what happens when you um, are not a union carpenter. This needs to connect. So Jake's been working on this guillotine all week. I've heard the banging and the, the sawing and the hammering in the background. Oh, what up, son? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Holy sh this thing's heavy. I'm, I'm gonna build the, the mast separately so we can get it inside the yeah, studio. Yeah, yeah. Here, let me just show you how tall the mass is gonna be. Watch your toes. Watch your toes and the sides. And your heels, fire. So you're at the front. Okay. This is where the uh, business end goes? That's where, that's the business end. These are gonna go here. This is how big it's gonna be. There. <laughs> this gives you a sense of just how large this is gonna be and how impactful it's gonna be. Um, imagine 18 inch wide piece of steel oh, man. falling Sick. from that height. It's probably gonna weigh what, like 30 pounds? Probably gonna weigh about 30 pounds. Yeah, now that I'm seeing how tall this is, I don't think it's gonna have a problem. Yeah. The problem that we're having, it's not done. It's not done because I got more work to do, son. And, and, and in the course of all this, like, I'm trying to build this like on off days when I got extra time and stuff, running the rest yeah. of the studio and filming other videos and stuff. So I'm trying to make time for this and uh, just to get it this far, but I got to move on to some, a few other things. Meaning the next time we come back to this, it's gonna be complete and we're gonna be building the blade. And I know that some of y'all came and you guys were like, man, I wanna see this guillotine chop some stuff. Well, just to give you guys a little taste. Might as well quit. Cause it's Toby in this bitch. Yeah, it's Toby in this bitch. So you might as well quit. Cause it's Toby in this bitch. Yeah, it's Toby in this bitch. So you might as well quit. Stop it. Y'all be coming for your pockets. Might as well quit. If you guys are interested in following us on the rest of this journey when we make the blade and we start actually chopping stuff with that guillotine, consider subscribing. I had this dream about Brett. He was like six stories up, climbing the outside of this like bamboo scaffolding. We're like, Brett, just chill, just chill. And he's like, don't worry about me, son, I got it, son. In the most brutal, gruesome way, he slips, falls over backwards, starts hitting the bamboo scaffolding. <laughs> And he just like belly flops on the ground. And he's like, I'm good, son. Don't worry about me, son. I'm good. And I'm like, oh my god, Brett, you're dead, dude. Oh. dude. That's exactly what he would say if he fell like that. He'd go, oh, I'm good, son. 